Hi everyone, welcome to The Storyist. For today's episode, we will take you to a beautiful vacation home and witness the extraordinary experience of a Black American. Stay until the end of the video to see what happens. Every holiday, people like to spend their time with their loved ones. To be physically present with someone you love creates strong emotional support, like in the occurrence of depression, anxiety, and other mental illness. Like in the case of an interracial couple, Joan and Harry Mayer. Being in that kind of relationship gives them positive virtues between races. This also helped Harry's adjustment to Canadian culture. He's originally from Africa and moved into this country for a career opportunity five years ago. He was hired by an IT company and asked to build a system and mobile application for law school students. Later on, he met Joan, a law student at that time. Harry described her as a typical white American. She had shoulder length blonde hair. She also had a slim face with a pointy nose and blue eyes. At their first encounter, Harry thought that Joan would be discriminating against him for how he looked. He had a dark complexion, curly hair, plumed lips, and a South African accent. To his surprise, Joan didn't bother with any of his features or what his race was. Instead, Joan showed him kindness and acceptance of who he was. Later on, he decided to ask Joan for an exclusive date. After two years of being together, they finally decided to get married. Now, they had been happily married for almost five years, but haven't had any luck with their kids, mainly because they were busy with their careers. Joan is now a successful public attorney focusing on anti-discrimination, and she's also a professor at one of the top universities in the country. At the same time, Harry is a very successful software engineer and even started building his name, creating different mobile applications. One day, Joan attended one of their company events. The event was like a recreational activity for each employee, so they could invite their family members. Since Harry was busy with his work, thus Joan decided to go on her own. It was a camping event, and she noticed that most of her colleagues brought their children or husband, and they were happily building their tents. While looking at her colleagues, Joan felt envious because she was fixing the tent alone, with no husband or child that would help her. She thought that Harry would be happily joining her in this camp if they had a child. She thought they would happily fix the tent and have a bonfire together, which made her smile. Then suddenly, someone interrupted her daydreaming for a little concern. The camp went smoothly like every other event. When Joan arrived at their home, she put her luggage in their room, rested for a bit, and took a shower. A few moments after, she started preparing dinner for Harry. She's preparing steak and salad for their dinner. Then, after a couple of hours, Harry arrived. He gave his wife a warm hug and some kisses. He immediately smelled the aroma of steak, which made him salivate. During dinner, Harry asked his wife how the event went. Joan pointed out relevant events that happened in the camp. Then she mentioned what she felt about going there alone. It made her sad to witness her colleagues enjoying their families. She pointed out that she wanted to have a baby and wanted to de-stress herself from work. Harry was enjoying himself with the delicious steak prepared by his wife. He also listened carefully to what Joan felt during camping. He felt sad that his wife felt that way. Suddenly, he came up with an idea. He excitedly told Joan to have their second honeymoon. Maybe just a little out of town would do just to separate them from the hustle and bustle of the cities. He even added that they should look for a house near the forest or beach, too. From being sad, Joan's spirit was immediately uplifted. They even started planning the perfect vacation home over dinner. The next day, the two went on their usual routine. Eat their toast, grab their coffee, and go to work. However, it was a bit different for Joan. At the end of business hours, she immediately went home. After resting for a bit, she checked the mobile applications of the tourist vacation houses. The application was very convenient because all of the latest vacation houses were posted on the site, and the user could also check for a good payment scheme. They may also conduct their payment transaction using the site. It's like a multi-purpose application. That's why the application had millions of subscribers. Joan started to look for a vacation home near the beach area. There were millions of suggestions that made her excited. She even checked for a place with a good view of nature. After scrolling a hundred times, she finally managed to have the list of vacation houses. She started with some houses with a beach view, discussed some details, 
and then jumped to another house on her list. Minutes by minute, she crossed out most of the homes on her list. Then she was about to make a call to the owner of the villa she wanted to rent. A few rings before the owner finally answered the phone. Without saying hello, he asked Joan for a video call so that he would know her face. Joan agreed to the man's request. After opening the video, she noticed that she was talking to a man in his late 60s. The man introduced himself as Rody. He was delighted that he was talking to someone of his race. After discussing the terms, Joan agreed right away and transferred the reservation fee to Rody's account. Later on, Joan excitedly called her husband to discuss the vacation home she had recently reserved. She said that it was a private villa and had an infinity pool. Then she asked Harry to go to the estate a bit earlier to check everything because she would be having a business trip. Harry followed his wife's instructions. Maple Drive Roadie Residences. Then he could find the key under the doormat. After a 30 minute drive, he finally arrived at his destination. It had a black gate with roses on top. He felt that the house might be a Disney theme. Next, he saw the beautiful garden with a fountain in the center. Then walking a bit further, he saw the infinity pool that Joan was talking about. Harry finally found the main door and checked for the key under the doormat. Then he opened the door and walked through the living room. The design was very light and minimalist. He knew that both of them would enjoy staying in the place. Then he saw an old man approaching him. Rody was surprised that a black man stepped into his house. He had an adverse reaction to it. And without even asking, he asked the man to leave or he would call the police. He thought that someone of his color might do something bad. He even pushed the man. Harry explained that he was not a thief and wouldn't do anything bad. He also added that they made a reservation for the house. He just went early to check the place. Rody didn't believe anything he said because he had FaceTime with Joan and she was a white girl. From the moment Harry heard the word white girl, he knew that it was because of his race. Yet he didn't talk about it, but rather discuss the race. What he did was explain that Joan was his wife and she was on her way to the place. Rody frowned at him and ignored everything Harry explained. He insisted that he would call the cops. However, Harry still refused to leave the house, making Rody call the cops. After a while, the police patrol arrived and asked what was happening. Before Rody could say anything, Harry calmly handed his calling card to the police. His card said he was the primary contributor to the tourist house's mobile applications. He pointed to Rody and mentioned that he was filing charges for bridging the contract. Rody laughed hysterically. Then he asked the police to take Harry away and he would press charges for robbery. On the other hand, Harry was very calm about the situation. He handed an e-file of a contract together with his signature and Rody's identification card. He told the police that he would like to press charges against Rody. He violated the contract with the anti-discrimination bill that Joan validated since she was an attorney. It turned out that Rody wasn't aware of the contract's content that he had signed and asked Harry for forgiveness. In the goodness of Harry, he forgave Rody, but he ended their contract and discredited all his subscriptions. After a month, Harry saw Rody's house posted for sale. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more.